Oh, yes, Lord. There is a bomb in Gilead. And there is a, a, a Lord who allows us to come before his presence. To see him clearly and to receive of him. Amen. I want to uh, kind of set the backdrop for this message. And what I'm going to be talking to you about, let me just tell you. We, we're using electronic things now, saints. Hallelujah. So I got it on this iPad and my phone. I want to talk to you about God's elect remnant. God's elect remnant. And we'll be coming from 1 Kings chapter 18 and 19. And you'll find in those chapters, hallelujah, Elijah uh, defeats Baal. We have some victories, don't we? We have victories in God. Sometimes we have tough times, but then we get our breakthrough. So the first thing I want to point out to you is Elijah defeats the prophets of Baal. Second thing is Elijah becomes depressed and needs God's help under a broom tree and in a cave. Sometimes we go through. We sanctify. We feel with God's spirit, but sometimes we go through it. God encourages him under that broom tree by sending an angel and he encourages him to come out that cave. Anybody that's locked up today, I'm telling you, come out and do the works of the Lord. And then the last point and the, the one that uh, I want to really push home is that God revealed to Elijah his remnant. And then if you were listening to the scripture that was read, in uh, uh, Romans 11 and 5, hallelujah, there is still a remnant. Elijah didn't know he was part of the remnant. Some of you may not know that you're part of the remnant, but, but God has a remnant in the earth. And I'm going to give you some of the characteristics of the remnant. Now let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. We'll begin at verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Have you ever had a hair appointment and had to make a reservation because the beautician was so good that everybody wanted to see her? Have you ever had to reserve a car on a trip? You was taking a trip to Florida and you had to make a reservation. Mm -hmm. And in that reservation, you described what you needed. In 1 Kings chapter 18, it's up on the screen, verse 20, it says, So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together at where? Mount Carmel. Next verse. And Elijah. Now, we don't know a lot about Elijah. I think he was a Tishbite. But God doesn't give his parents' name, his children's name, not very much. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? Sometimes you can't make up your mind. You got too much going on. And so Elijah sees that the people don't know whether to serve Baal or to serve God. Sometimes you get like that, but I come to encourage you, stay on the Lord's side. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Keep yourself saying a little prayer to the Lord Jesus. And we call him Lord. Amen. He's Lord over our life. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. He's Lord over our life. We got family. Some of us got spouses and all that. But Jesus is Lord over all of the stuff we're going on. I know we got to report to our boss on Tuesday. But Jesus is Lord. Somebody say amen. He's the Lord of your life. And that's what's keeping you. That's what's keeping your mind, your body, and your spirit. Because Jesus, you decided to make Jesus Lord. Hallelujah. And when he's Lord, he know how to take care of us. Thank you, Jesus. He said, how long? What's wrong with y'all? How long will you falter between two opinions? Uh, if the Lord is God, 
then follow him. Hey. But if Baal follow him, but the people didn't say a word. I know that we got some preachers that's a little crazy, yes, but you need a preacher. Because preachers hear from God. Here, these people didn't say a word. They didn't say no amens because they were perplexed. Because Ahab and Jezebel had turned the children of Israel around. People can turn you. We, we are physically what we eat. And we are emotionally and mentally what we digest through words and conversation. That's why you can't have all kinds of friends. Not all kinds. You say, if one just won't behave, you got to let them go. And God will give you another friend, give you somebody to talk to. But the people have been swayed because Ahab got the wrong wife. Didn't he? <laughs> Jezebel's daddy was a king and they all served a, 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 a God that was like uh, what you could touch. You can make it, you, idols and stuff like that. We can't fall in love with our cars and our jewelry and our houses. Amen. And I sometimes watch that show where they show the real nice houses. You know, with the two, with the butler's kitchen or the, um, the fancy kitchen and then your little kitchen. If you got a big enough house, you can get a, a chef's kitchen. That's what I'm trying to say. And then I see how they have the spirals, bed, uh, uh, staircases and all that. It's still a house. You can't sleep twice. You can only sleep one time in that bad boy. For that night. Amen. And what I've noticed, because I watched them so much, I'm telling on myself a little bit, is that they're just bigger. Amen. And it separates people sometimes and causes lawsuits. But Elijah here is saying, hey, uh, uh, y'all need to make a decision. And they didn't say one word because they were wrapped up into confusion. When our leaders, that's why I pray for Joe Biden. I pray for that crazy Trump too. I pray for my leaders because we, they set policy and all what y'all suffering, they can lie all they want. But when we cut that oil off and start doing them embargoes against Russia, I'm telling you, that's when all them gas prices and all the chicken, you buy chicken now, you got to pay half your paycheck to get one chicken. The devil is a lie. So leadership my point is leadership can mess you up and elijah had to had to go up to mount carmel to deal with some things and we're going to see that let's move on next verse in first king then elijah said to the people i alone am left a prophet of the lord but baal's prophets are 450 y'all don't get caught up in numbers it was one man elijah Against 450 prophets of Baal. Amen. And Jezebel used to, uh, would feed these guys. I don't know if it was any ladies that were prophets, but she would feed them and take care of them. So it was a whole lot of them. Let's look what happens. Next verse. Therefore, let them give us two bulls. Mm. Two bulls. How many bulls? Two bulls, because some sacrifice getting ready to go on. And uh, let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it into pieces and lay it, in, uh, lay it on the wood, but uh, put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other bull and lay it on wood also, but put no fire under it. Uh-huh. Some fire had to come from God. Next verse. Then you can call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of what? The Lord. He's Lord over our lives. Somebody say he's Lord. And the God who answers by fire. Oh, he is God. God has to come in and burn up some things that needs to be burned up. He has to uh, purify us. I think it's the last verse uh, in, in Hebrews, it says, God is a God of fire. Mm. 
And then he says, so all the people answered and says, it is well spoken. Now, since he uh, has them use Baal and God, they can say something. Some people are losing their testimony, but not the remnant. The remnant don't lose their testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So here we go now. Next verse. Uh, now, Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourself and prepare it. For you are many and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. So they took the bull, which was given them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from what? Morning till noon. He gave them four hours. Early morning till noon saying, oh, Baal. Hear us. And ba Baal is the singular. Balaam is the plural of that God. But there was no voice. Hallelujah. No answer. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. Can you see that in your mind? You got 450 of them. Just jumping and saying, answer us Baal. Dancing and doing all kind of stuff. Trying to conjure up. A voice to come out of heaven. Hallelujah. Don't people conjure up things and tell you that they spiritual and they, oh, I'm just not with nobody. Ah, come on now. We need to get back to the basics. We do believe in Jesus. Next verse. Mm -hmm. And so it was at noon. Hallelujah. Wait on your blessing. Wait on the Lord to do what he going to do because he's going to always come through. And at noon, somebody said noon. Hallelujah. The, the, the Lord moves on the twelves. He moves at midnight and he moves at noon. Uh-huh. Because when Paul was on the way to Damascus Road, uh, uh, it said that, the, that Jesus shone brighter than the noonday sun. That Elijah mocked them and said, cry aloud. <laughs> For he is a God. Either he is meditating or he is busy or he is on a journey or perhaps he's sleeping. And must be awakened. Our God never sleeps nor slumbers. He doesn't take a break nor does he miss your prayers. He doesn't go on, on holiday or any of that. Because God is God. He's sustained by himself. And you don't have to conjure nothing up. All you got to do is call on him. Call on the name of Jesus. And he will answer by and by. Mm, thank you Jesus. I thank God that he hears me. I thank God that he hears my prayers. And I thank God he hears the prayers of the saints. But God has a remnant. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So they cried aloud. And that jumping, they, they didn't get nothing with the jumping, so they started cutting themselves. There's some people that's still crazy like that. Offering babies on the sacrifice and all kinds of foolishness. Hmm. They started cutting themselves. You see that on CNN sometimes on, during Easter. People actually let somebody put a uh, thorn or a thing uh, in their hand for real. I don't know if they get high on drugs before that, but that, that would hurt. I know Jesus did that for the redemption of the saints. I don't need to do that. But there's some people that do. They get the nail prints and then they let, the, let them put thorns on them. Ah, that's ridiculous. We don't need to go that far. The same way, oh Lord, let me stick to this. So they cried aloud and cut themselves as was their custom with knives and lances. I don't even know what a lance is. Is that like a machete? Is it bigger than a knife? Lord Jesus. And, and look what happened. Blood started gushing. God don't need you to bleed for him to answer you. I know Jesus prayed and travailed in the garden until they say the sweat was like drops of blood. But God don't need you to cut yourself to get an answer. Hallelujah. A couple of days of fasting and he's coming through. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Next verse. And when midnight, a midday was passed. They prophesied until, oh, now they're trying to prophesy. They prophesied until the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice. 
But what? There was no answer. No one answered. No one paid attention. And it's 450 now. They making a lot of noise, but they ain't making no progress. Don't be uh, 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 afraid that it's just you doing something. You and God are enough. And then y'all, what was the second song you all sang today? This. What's the second song? Our God is greater. And then we sang good, good father, right? In, in between one of them songs, I realized I've never been alone since I was 12 years old. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost when I was 12. And he's a comforter. And now I, that, that, I'm have to meditate on that because the Lord just breathed. Any of you all that got, since you've been saved, your, your marital or single status does not dictate what you have. You can't be alone with God. If God is in your life, he's with you. Hallelujah. Midday came, they prophesied. Next verse. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near and he prepared the altar of the Lord that was broken. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. To whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be my name. Next verse. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seas of seed. And he put the word wood in order. Mm, hallelujah. Cut up the pieces, the bull, bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood and said, fill four water pots with water. <laughs> Pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Now he's making it even harder. Then he says, do it a second time. <laughs> then he got bold in God and said, do it a third time. Hallelujah. And they did it a third. And as so the water ran all around the altar. <coughs> he also filled the trenches with water. Mm, here we go. And it came to pass. Hallelujah. Somebody said, and it came to pass. Mm. Your miracle may not have come. A lot of my miracles have come. But it's going to come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. We declare it in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. <laughs> that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, now he's talking to somebody. <laughs> the reason that Baal's prophets couldn't get anything done because they was talking to the wrong God. Then he's called, he said, he said, Lord God of Abraham, oh, Lord God of Isaac, Lord God of Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things because you said to do it. Hallelujah. We can't go in our own strength, but we got to go off the word of God. We got to trust what the word says. If the word says it, God will back it up. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people going in their own strength right now, even in this tough day. But I'm relying on the word of God. I'm relying on him whom I serve. Hallelujah. I've done all these things at your word. Next verse. Mm. hear me oh lord he didn't take it for granted he still got a humble spirit hey god may have talked to you yesterday but don't get it twisted baby you gotta stay humble hear me oh god hear me oh lord hear me that this people may know i gotta preach because the people need to know you lord and that you have turned their hearts back to you again God always sends somebody. Next verse. He sends somebody to stir us up, saints. He sends somebody to keep us from getting cold. Then the fire <laughs> of the Lord fell. Mm, thank you, Jesus. 
Oh, this Elijah was something special. He called fire down from heaven. Mm. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust. And it licked up the water. Shoo. He didn't just burn the wood and the sacrifice. It licked up the stone. It got to be hot to burn a stone. We use stones to put around our fireplace when we go camping. We use stones in our house. The fireplace is in our house, but God's fire will consume the stone. Thank you, Jesus. So I wanted to give you that backdrop and tell you that Elijah had uh, uh, defeated the 400 prophets of Baal, Baal or Baal. And then in the 18th verse, of that same chapter, he says, yet, no, not the 18th verse, but, but the, uh, I think it's the last verse of 18, no, 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 what verse is this? Verse number 40. <clears throat> See, we got to be a little bit, I like the armies of God rise up because we're going to do warfare. And I don't want to disturb your spirit, but I just want you to have this word. The prophet prophesied. The prophet made the altar. The prophet called on the name of the Lord. The prophet defeated Baal's 450, but he didn't stop. He killed them. And I know we've said this before, that there's some things in our life that need to be killed. Because if you leave them, they're coming back. Some things don't know how to leave you alone. Hallelujah. Hey, some things keep bugging you and bugging you and bugging you until you make up your mind that that's it. So in verse 40, Elijah said to them, seize those prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them, not nan one of them go. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon. Mm. And what did he do? He killed them. There's some things in our life that we must kill. There's some times in which the, the, the gods of others must be shown that they have no power and they must be killed. And this is what God's, God used Elijah to do. He used him to destroy the prophets of Baal. Now, here comes the good part. The part where you and I engage. Elijah's a big man now, isn't he? He real big. He, he's, God has shown up for him. He's gave him a great miracle. He's done all kinds of things. But as soon as you open chapter 19, Jezebel says, I'm, I'm going to get you, boy. The same thing you done to my prophets that was, that was around here and conjuring up things for us because the devil has some power now. He had the same thing that they were doing uh, and you kill, I'm going to kill you. And you know how when you're on a high and then you have a low, you ain't kind of thinking right. So Elijah had some trouble. Now this great prophet is running from a woman. <laughs> you're talking about women have power. They do have power. Because she put out an APB on his life. All points bulletin. She says, I'm going to kill you before the, the, this time tomorrow. And Elijah believed her. Ugh. You can be anointed, but you got to stay with it. <laughs> you, your anointing can get confused. Because she said, I'm getting you. And, and this is the woman that had killed the prophets before. You know, she turned Ahab. Made him do all kinds of stuff. And then made him bow down to a false god. And now uh, uh, if anybody in the land would, would begin to prophesy and call on the name of the Lord, she would kill him. Mm, something God allows. Don't ask me why now. God just does. Something he allows, sometimes he allows stuff to show his power. Because he's going to use this same Elijah. To make the dogs eat her body. But at this point, he's afraid. 
So he gets on the run in, in uh, uh, chapter 19. He gets scared, y'all. It's okay to be afraid, but don't lose out with God. He got scared and went down to a broom tree, but he didn't lose out on God. He got scared and went into a cave, but he didn't lose out with God. In chapter 19, Elijah, uh, uh, he, he gets afraid. And, and, and Ahab, <clears throat> it says to, in verse 19, chapter 19, verse 1, and Ahab told Jezebel, look at this man, tattletale, my God. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and also how he had executed the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah <laughs> saying, so, so let the gods of, do to me and more if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about them this time. And when he saw that, now this is interesting. <clears throat> Because her words caused Elijah to have a vision. He didn't just hear what she said, did he? The Bible says, and when he saw that, he saw himself dying. Come on, saints. You can see yourself in a situation and never coming out. Oh, man, I'm just going to have to live my life like this forever. I'm going to have to deal with these knuckleheads and this and that and stay in this neighborhood. The devil is a lie. What you desire, God can give you. What you hope for, the Lord can bring to pass. You can get bigger and better. Thank you, Jesus. We are elevating. I heard you. We are going higher. Whatever I set my mind to, that's why I'm careful. I'm going to have. Because I know what God is doing in my life. And I know that he set a remnant in the earth. Everybody's not afraid. Everybody's not going through. But somebody called a remnant is living off God's pleasure, off his plenty, off his joy, off his love, off his kindness. God is being good to somebody. Thank you, Jesus. And if you look around in your own garden, you'll find some good thing. He heard the words, but the, in verse 3, he said he saw. When he saw that, he didn't see her. She was talking, and a messenger sent a word. But he had an, enough fear or whatever it was in him to conjure up a vision. And when he saw it, he arose. And what did he do? He got out of Dodge, didn't he? Uh -huh. He ran and went to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. Then the Bible, and I don't have time to go into all of these scriptures because I just wanted to give you a good back backdrop. Then the Bible says he goes down to a broom tree in verse 5 I believe it is <clears throat> and he went to sleep mm -hmm. and suddenly an angel touched him <laughs> when you get in trouble Psalm 91 will come alive God has given his angels charge over thee lest you dash your foot against the stone Oh, when he was in his most broken place, when he thought his life was going to be like other prophets, the angel of the Lord touched him. The angel of the Lord didn't just touch him, but he, he cooked for him, gave him something to drink and encouraged him the same way <clears throat> that the angel encouraged Jesus in the garden after the third prayer, the angel of the Lord encouraged Elijah. Oh, my God. Oh, and then Elijah got up and ate, didn't he? The Bible says he ate. And then the angel of the Lord cooked for him again. The second time. Sometime the first touch isn't enough. You need to be touched again. Somebody say, Lord, touch me again. Lord, touch me again. Revive me again, Lord. You touched me back in 19 uh, 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 this year, but I need you to touch me in the 2022. Hallelujah. Lord, you've done some good things in my past, but I need you. Uh, I need you to do some things today. You, 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 you stopped me from being killed in that accident. I was laying out on the hospital room and, and, and I wasn't feeling well, really well. I was under anesthesia, Lord, and you brought me out of that. I need you to bring me out of some more things, God. 
Hallelujah. I, 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 I seriously need an angel to encourage me. Don't you know he went 40 days in the strength of that food? When God touches you, you can go on, saints. When God moves on you, you can go on. And Elijah got up from that broom tree. Then he went over into a cave. And the Bible says he talked to God in that cave. Mm, and when God began to reveal some things, he first came in a strong wind. Elijah was in the cave and a strong wind began to blow, but the Lord was not in the wind. Then the scripture says that there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. Mm. And then the scripture says that this God that answers by fire showed some fire, some strong fire, but he wasn't in the fire. Then Elijah heard a voice. He said, what are you doing here? God spoke to him in a still, small voice. I hear the voice of the Lord saying, you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. And we got to stop. We, we got to not stop, but we got to start praying that we'll keep the faith in plenty. I'm going to say that again. I know we pray when people are down and we pray for deliverance, but you all be careful. When the blessings of the Lord overtake your family. There's a thing in God called timing. He waits until a certain date. And, I, and, and, and some of you all, if you think through your life, there's been a certain date when God lift the pressure off and he brought you through. Amen. And, and, and so now I feel like this. The remnant of God is going to be blessed so much that they're going to have to remember not to lose the faith. Hallelujah. God can bless you so much that you forget about him. There's a lot of people who used to pick up people to come to church when they had a hoopty. But God gave them a Lexus or a, a Mercedes. God help us if he give us a rose. Y'all ain't going to never see nobody with no rose coming to church. Mm, thank you, Jesus. He said, oh, no, I can't drive that up there. The saints going through, they won't understand. But God's got a blessing. And I warn you in the name of Jesus, when your pockets are full and overflowing, because he can do it and he will. This is where people get, uh, uh, some people, I ain't going to just say preachers, get a little messed up. It's not in their going through. In the going through, we pray. When my blood pressure goes up, I pray. When, I, when I, my sugar count ain't right, I pray. But when my pockets are swole, what do you do when you got what you want? Sometimes we forget God. When we get the house, oh, Lord Jesus. Mm, so he was in the still, small voice. Hallelujah. He said, what are you doing here, Elijah? What's wrong with you? Why are you stuck in this cave? He asked him twice, what are you doing here? Mm. Are you in a place that you don't need to be? Should you be ministering and you're still sitting back? Is God calling you to do certain things and you have withheld yourself from God? I'm speaking to somebody on Zoom and somebody in this audience today. Are you withholding yourself from God? What are you doing there? What are you doing saying, oh God, I'll wait until this time. Oh, I'll wait until that time. You ain't no spring chicken. Get up and do what God said. Come on, saints of God. Hear the voice of the Lord and then obey. Go ahead and do it. You may not look the best doing it. You may not sound the best doing it. But do it for the Lord. Hallelujah. And then God gave Elijah the next assignment. Hmm. Oh, didn't he? He says, uh, well, let me point this out. No, let me give you the, the next assignment. God gave uh, Elijah his next assignment. He told him to go and anoint Hazel. Then he told him to anoint Jehu. And then he to told him to, to anoint Elisha. Mm, thank you, Lord. Elijah, in verse 14 of chapter 19, began to give God uh, uh, 
the reason why he was in the cave. I have been very zealous for the Lord of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, yes, I am alone uh, left here. And they seek to take my life. Now, God didn't even address this. Watch me now. Sometimes when we complain, God don't address it until he gives you what he wants to give you. And then he may address it and he may not. Then the Lord said to him, go, get up out of this cave. And I say to you today, get up and do the work of the Lord. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, listen here, I want you to anoint <laughs> as king of Sy uh, Hazel, as king of Syria. I just saw a uh, res uh, 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 not resurrection, but restoration. God's voice in the assignment restored Elijah. You know, he didn't address his fears, did he? He says nothing about what you're going through. He just says, hey, get up and go. Anoint Hazel as king of Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And then you talk about dying. So then I'm going to give you an, an heir. And Elisha, the son of Shepha, of Abel, Mahola, you shall anoint him prophet in your place. In other words, I'm going to show you legacy. But now we get <clears throat> to our main point. Three times Elijah says, I'm the only one, Lord. He says it in uh, verse, what is this? Verse 22 of chapter 18. I alone am left. He says it again in uh, 1 Kings 19, chapter 10, I mean, chapter 19, verse 10, I alone, Lord, am left to do the work. Then he repeats it again when he's talking to God in uh, 1 Kings 19 and 14. He says, uh, I'm doing it all by myself. I'm in this cave and you showed me all this stuff. And it's the same cave you showed Moses and I know later on, we may have to present ourselves to Jesus, but I'm doing this stuff all by myself. I'm the only one standing in righteousness. I'm the only preacher that's preaching this way. I'm the only one that's going through God. Then the Lord laid the revelation on him. Hallelujah. And it's found in verse number 18. The Lord says to Elijah, yet I have reserved. <laughs> Sometimes we make reservations, don't we? The Lord said, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. <laughs> when you make a reservation, it's a special thing. If you call up the Ritz Carlton and make a reservation and put your deposit on it, when you get there, you will have your room. If you reserve a flight to Paris, France, for your honeymoon or for your uh, anniversary. When you pay your money, they make the reservation. And when you show up, the airplane is ready. If you make a reservation to go on holiday or vacation, you done worked hard all week, all year, all, all those months. You pay your money to go over the Hilton Head, to walk on the beach down there and do all them kind of things. You know that if you reserve it and pay your money, they better have it ready. God's got a remnant. God's got some people that don't know how to bow. God has some people that's reserved for just him. Elijah didn't know it, and you may not know it either. Elijah didn't know he was part of that group. He says, I'm it. I'm alone. God had to reveal it, saints. And I want you to know there's something on the inside of you that won't, will not bow because you're part of a remnant. 
There's going to be a time when God calls for the rise of the remnant. For you to speak out against unrighteousness. But there's something in you right now that won't bow. You've seen a lot of people step away from the faith. And you've seen a lot of people that don't know what's going on. They don't know whether to be afraid or to be scared or to be uh, uh, trying to do this or that. And they can't really connect to nobody. They may not be the remnant. But you, the people that I'm preaching to right now, there's something on the inside of you that won't let you quit. There's something down on the inside of you that keeps a prayer that keeps you calling on the name of Jesus, even when you don't want to. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when you're like, ah, maybe I will, maybe I. There's something. And it's the writ God has reserved. Can you imagine? Do you not know that Noah was reserved? Everybody else was going in their own ways. But Noah had something of God inside of him. Just like you. Let me talk about the remnant. You, you already heard that the remnant is uh, reserved for God. Amen. Now, in Romans chapter 11, verse 4, and we don't need to go there necessarily, it says that you're reserved for himself. There's a lot of reservations. There's a lot of uh, calls. God calls this one and calls. And Elijah's out there doing all that work. And Elijah's probably saying, well, why didn't some of that 7,000 show up when I was doing all that stuff by myself? I had to kill the animal, load up the fire, do all of this, pour the water. I, I needed some help. Where was the seven? God said, hold up, brother. I got 7,000 that has not bowed the knee. I'm telling you, there's something going on, saints. There's a revival of the remnant in the land. It's not just you telling yourself to come to church. Oh, no. And in, 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 uh, 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 Romans 11 and 4, he says, I reserve them for myself. Mm. And then the remnant are for the preservation of society. You think you're just praying for your granddaughter or your, your, your family. Every, there's a lot of people that see you. If you look in, uh, I think it's Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. There's a lot of things going on. But God salts the earth with your life. How you're walking around. How you're living. And if they press you and peel back the onion, you'll say, for God I live. And for God I die. You can't move me off my faith. I'm going to stand for the Lord no matter what. And God, even if you're quiet, is using the remnant to come against gender neutrification. I know I ain't saying that right, but that's the way I'm going to say it. Gender, well, I got to be identified by my pronouns. Huh? The Lord said, I made male and female. God is using the remnant. to. You ain't got to say nothing. I ain't telling you to be political or not political. I'm not saying one is right and one is right. I'm just saying God's going to use the remnant to stand for right. Oh, you know, not a woman, you something else. That's the foolishness of man. I think sometimes it's, oh Lord, let me stay here. So God is using the remnant to bring rationale. Hallelujah. You can play like a woman, but you can't be one. Hallelujah. God will not allow a man to give birth to anything but a vision. God will not allow a man to give a birth to anything but a, a, a concept or some engineering. And God will never let a woman carry a seed. I don't care what you do, how you do it. You don't, you're not the seed. You're the incubator of the seed. you the covering of your children and your family. You're the one who lifts that hung down head of that man when he's so broken from the world. You're the one that rubbed lotion on your babies. Thank you. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. The remnant will rise in righteousness. Hallelujah. Mm, there's no bowing in you. 
and your election is by grace. We'll deal with that next Sunday. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you that there's a, a remnant in the land. There's a people that will not bow and that are not confused. And if God have to rain money down into your bank account, he ain't going to let you go hungry. Because the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous uh, uh, beg for bread, nor my seed go hungry. You know the scripture. Hallelujah. God is still on the throne. Thank you, Jesus. He's still doing great things. Hallelujah. And this morning, I wanted to introduce to you that there is a remnant in the land. Hallelujah. There's some people that God has called out that have set apart who still have a praise on their mouth. They're not confused about who they are or what they're supposed to be doing because they're on assignment from the Lord. God has reserved them close to his bosom and he feeds them by his word. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for another day. Thank you that I'm part of the remnant. Thank you that I got hope on the inside. Thank you that I know how to clap my hands. Thank you that I know how to lift my voice. I'm going to glorify you. I'm going to praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? I was wondering what I was. I was wondering why this stuff don't discourage me, why I'm not getting low, why I'm not wondering where my next meal is coming from. Because God will, will, will make a Goshen in Egypt. He'll put a place, hey, 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 hallelujah, he'll make a place for you. He'll make room for you and he'll cause you to be blessed. Everybody's not going down, saints. Tebababoshaya. Everybody's not searching for their next meal. Some of y'all are looking for your next house. Hallelujah. Because you're blessed. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your home. You're blessed because God says you're blessed. He had to reveal to Elijah. <laughs> like he has to reveal to us. We're a part of his remnant. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. There is a revelation that comes with being a remnant. It means that you cannot fail. You cannot lose. You cannot fall by the wayside because God has you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're always on the case. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you today. We sense and feel something special in the atmosphere. God, we ask that you pour out your spirit upon all of us. God, we declare that we're blessed. We declare that we cannot fail. We declare we will never bow down to Baal, but we'll continue to serve you. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you in our coming in and our going out. We pray, Lord, that we will not leave here the same way we came. That every problem, every issue that you're dealing with it right now. We declare full health to our body, full health to our mind, full health to our spirit. We speak life. We speak life. Everything that's not acting right, God. Our blood pressures, our head, our, our bodies, our pancreas, whatever it is, we declare life. Satan, the Lord rebuke you right now. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we declare our families are blessed. Our children are saved. They're sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for revival taking place on the inside of our heart. We thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give you the high praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. We clap our hands and give you thanks this morning. We thank you for another day, God. We thank you for revival of the spirit, revival of the soul, revival of our body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. Come on, shout before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey. We bless you.
bless you now. We bless you now. We bless you now. We bless you now. We grab our blessing, Lord. We reach for our blessing. Our praise brings the blessing down. We thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing my home. Thank you for blessing my family. Thank you for blessing my children. Thank you for my grandchildren. I say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to all that you're doing. Hey, glory. Give him a deep praise from down in your belly. Thank you, Jesus, for my life. Thank you for my health and strength. Hey, glory. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We shabak your name, oh, Lord. Hey, glory. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus.